Hello, my name is Sylvia and today I'm going to present to you how we can import PST files into Office 365 mailboxes by using the PST import tool, which you can find in, find in Office 365. We have a perfectly good article that is describing the entire process step by step, which you will be able later to find also in the references of this video. So let's proceed further. So let's go to Office 365 Admin Center. I'm using my Google Admin account and my tenant is already set for this uh, imports to be done. In case that you don't, uh, that you're not sure whether you're having the right permissions, it's better to check that. So let's do that together for you to know from where to make the the check in the Exchange Admin Center. We are going to Permissions, Admin Roles. Your Google Admin account should be added to the Organization Management and the Organization Management role should be having also Mailbox Import Export to the assigned roles of the group. In case you don't see that one listed, on the right side, double click on organization management and click on the plus sign. Find the row in the list, then click add, OK, and save. The changes might take some time, but nevertheless, afterwards, you will be able to use the tool right away. So let's start. In order for us to find from where we can actually start using the PST import tool, we have to go to Office 365 Admin Center, then to go to Users and Data Migration. I will click on Upload PST files that will lead me to a different page. Okay, the page has loaded, so let's go Upload Email Messages. By clicking on this, we're going to open a new window where we actually can click on Show Network Upload SAS URL that will be showing us a code that later we will have to use in order to upload the data to the Azure storage. So you can download the Azure AC Copy tool from the window. After you install it on your machine, it will look like this. So let's copy it. After we paste it into the notepad, I will go and I will copy an example. Basically, the command that we have to use is shortly described in that particular way. I will use the So first we have the name of the tool, then we have from where do we want to import the files, then we will have to specify where they have to be imported, and afterwards we're going to have the option to generate also a lock. Okay, so I have made the two lines for the testing um, for today's video. And we're going to import a file that is a single file in a particular folder. And then we're going to import from this folder here a file and a file that is in another subfolder together with the, with the structure. So let's begin. I will open the Microsoft Azure Storage Tools. And since it's already described and I have placed my SAS URL in the proper place, as you can see, I have set also from where I want to take the files. I have specified where the lock should go. I will just copy, paste the entire row and I will run it. Since the size of the file, the PST files that I'm using today, it's quite small. 
the process is not taking too long. Keep in mind that the bigger the file, the longer it might take for the data to be uploaded to the Azure storage. I will run also the second command that I have prepared. This one is importing two files, as you can see, both of them were imported. So let's go and proceed further. We have already imported the data, so I can select I'm done uploading my files. And I have access to the mapping file. For this part here, I will return back to the article that we have and I will download and install the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer tool. The names are quite similar, but the tools are very different. Just click on free download for Windows and you will be able to actually install or, direct, or first download the tool and then install it on your machine. I have already installed the, um, the application here so I will just open it okay since I'm already having the Microsoft Azure storage explorer installed let's try to just do like this connect to Azure storage and I can use the source that I have saved that will allow me to connect and since I have already executed the two lines from the Microsoft Azure storage tools I have also my PST files right here so as you can see I have already imported files from these places and they are visible in the storage. As I have mentioned earlier, there was a subfolder that was containing a PSG file and the error key was uploaded perfectly fine to the ingestion data of the Azure storage. So since I'm having access to the place, so we have uploaded our files. Now we have to prepare also the CSV mapping. In order for us to download a copy of the PST import mapping file, we can go to step four of the article and simply click on download a copy. The copy of the file will show you how you have to describe the data so you could actually proceed towards the import of the, of the PST files from the Azure storage directly to the mailboxes of the users. We start with workload that is described as exchange in our case because we are uploading the data to exchange online mailboxes. Then we describe the file paths the name of the PST files themselves, whether, what are the names of the mailboxes to which we want to import the data. If we want to import the data to an archive, it's false or true, or if you want to upload the data to a specific folder. The last three are spe um, specific for imports to SharePoint so you could leave them blank. So I have already prepared my PST import file and I have described the file paths and the names of my PSTs together with the name of the mailboxes and where I want the data to be sent to. how you can check that in case you are wondering whether you're doing it right you could select the PST that you want to describe in the file and then go to copy URL go back to your notepad 
it and paste it. Then delete the first part. In this case, I'm having the file imported directly to the ingestion data. That's why I'm deleting everything that is standing before the name of my PST file. And for the file path, I leave a blank space. Let's see what is the situation with the file that I have imported into a folder. So I'm double clicking on the folder. I'm selecting the PST file and I'm going again to copy URL. I'm going to my notepad, I'm pasting. And this time, instead of, instead of deleting the entire file path, I will be just deleting the data that is before the name of the folder in my case. But in your case, that might be like few subfolders. So everything that is after in and the slash ingestion data slash should stay and the rest should be removed. So what you see here is the path of my to, to my file. I'm removing the slash in this case so I can separate the path from the name of the file and I'm copying this as the file path and I'm placing it right here as good right and then I describe the name of my PST file so I'm good to go I'm saving this I'm closing my file and I'm going back to the import data window. I will select that I have access to the mapping file and then I will go to next. I will place a name such as test import and I will continue further. So now I will press on add and I will select my CSV file. It has to be validated because it has less than 100 rows. Therefore, I'm pressing validate. It started validating. Okay, my file is being validated. So I will select the option that I'm accepting the terms and conditions and I will finish. Okay, so our import job has been created. In order for us to see the details, we have to select it and click on the right on view details that will open a new window where we can see how the import is actually going. And I see it in progress. Great. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it has been useful. And if you need more assistance or any other information, don't be afraid to reach to the support. Have a nice evening. Bye.